Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about the selection settings um, and kind of how they work. They're pretty useful for when you're working in a uh, Revit model when you have a variety of, of elements in there, different linked models, uh, multiple levels and whatnot. Um, you may want to use this so that you can kind of navigate the model a little bit easier and kind of do your picks and clicks um, in, it, it intentionally instead of, you know, accidentally because of some setting that's on or off. And uh, uh, I'll go ahead and show you that. So there's two ways to access it. So down here is kind of your selection settings uh, uh, buttons. And you can come down here and kind of click them on and off. That's is... Uh, um, that's all you have to do is just you know either click them on or off and then you can see that there's a little X next to it when it's off and then when it's on there's no X um, but you can also turn this stuff on if you come up here uh, while you're in the um, uh, whatever window so you can be in steel structure uh, um, collaborate whatever it is uh, you just have to come over here to this modify button and then down here you can see this little select uh, extended window so if we if we select that we then can come in here and um, turn on or off the different elements and as you see here um, if I just pin this we can see that we have select select L or select links um, and then pretty much these four things so select underlay uh, pinned and then elements uh, by face um, is checked on and then this drag elements on selection is off so if we come down here we can kind of see that and it's ordered the same way so we have the links we have the underlay we have the pinned um, and then we have the face and then finally the um, drag elements on selection and that's off as we see up here so there's two locations you can kind of turn these things on and off generally what I do is I come down here and you know select these because they're um, a little bit easier and I kind of know what I'm selecting um, just based off of the pictures um, so if I um, cl collapse that, uh, we'll go ahead and kind of um, uh, use each of these and kind of see, you know, why would we, we would want them on or off. And the first one is uh, linked, the link models. So it's kind of self-explanatory. If you select the link, you know, if it's on, then you can select linked models. Um, so right now I have the uh, structural model in this uh uh, Revit uh, project uh, I have that linked in and uh, right now I'm in the architectural model and this is the basic uh, sample model that comes with the install of Revit and I'm using Revit 2020 um, so in the interface should be the same either way uh, these layouts of these buttons and this um, uh, drop down is the same so regardless on what platform you're on your or what version you're gonna be fine um, so if we turn this on we can see uh, without much effort we can select the link um, which is not what I have right now we just have to come in and then tab into it and if we can might be a little bit more effort than I thought so you can see it grabs that link um, and you can verify that by coming over here and just making sure that the linked Revit model is the name of the link that you're actually trying to grab. And uh, you can see it highlighted in blue here. If I try the, uh, that again, um, you can see I can kind of pan around and find that box. Or you can try to tab into it if you kind of know the general phys the locate the general location of the model itself. Uh, you know, you tab into it and then select it, and you're good to go. And if for whatever reason you need to move it for um, uh, shared shot or shared site, you know, coordinates, if you if you had that set up, then um, you know you would tab into it, move it, and then update those coordinates. Um, so that's one. And if we have that turned off, regardless if I press tab or not, it's not going to let me get into it. So I'm clicking tab now, and it doesn't let me get into that model. Uh, and I can go ahead and kind of hide um, a few things so that we just grab or just so that we can see that linked model 
and you can see even with that cross selection there I didn't grab that uh, linked model and you can see I can't select it or tab into it um, so I'm gonna go ahead and press I mean go back so that we get our get all our stuff back and I'll go to the next button so that's gonna be the uh, select underlay elements and I'm gonna go ahead and keep the select links off and I'm gonna go into a level 2 plan that I created and all I did was if you're using this sample model is I went into so I came up here to the view tab um, and then came over here to plan views and I select on um, four plans and I come down here and select do not duplicate existing views I make sure that that's checked off and then I grab the uh, level 2 and then press OK to create that level 2 and then I come over here to the settings and I make sure that the underlay um, if I find it is set to uh, uh, base is level one and then top is level two if we extend that you can kind of see and then um, with those settings you can now see the level two stuff and if I come in here and kind of turn that off you can see it go away and if I turn it back on You can see that the elements from level one come back into uh, the drawing as a underlay. So with that box checked on, I can actually come in here. So I can't initially like um, grab these elements, like the selection box doesn't work. But if I come in here and tab into it, I then can select those underlaid elements, which this item here is, is located on level one. Um, if I don't want that to happen, like, you know, for example, if, you know, I have walls that are on top of each other from level to level, uh, then, you know, I may not want to tab into that level one and accidentally move that and just be able to tab into this wall if I wasn't, if I was having issues uh, selecting on it. And to do that, you would just, you know, turn it off. And then from there, uh, if I try to tab into this sink here, you can see I can only select the floor. Um, and I can't select the actual elements on level one, which is um, based off of our constraints over here as the underlay. Um, everything you know below level two is essentially the underlay, and I can't select any of that. So the next bit is going to be our pin elements, and generally, um, you know, you'll have some of your grids pinned, and <clears throat> excuse me, you can you'll also have um, when you bring in a linked model you would generally have that pin after you get it located correctly and uh, if we turn our linked model back on we can tab into that and actually select it and make sure that it's pinned and uh, we can turn on the pin so that we can uh, then look at the setting the selection setting down here so it right now isn't pinned, so we'll go ahead and pin that so it doesn't accidentally get moved at any point. And then now with uh, links still or with links turned on, so that I can actually select a link, um, I'm going to go ahead and come over here and uh, make sure that select pin is so that we can um, uh, see what happens when we try to select it. So we'll go ahead turn this off and then we'll come in here and just hide all these elements and we shouldn't have picked up that linked model and um, we'll come up here hide elements and then you can see that we did not select that model uh, linked is on so I should be able to grab links but because this element is pinned I can't select that element as soon as I turn this off you can see that I can now grab it and this works for anything it's just essentially a parameter and it's just filtering your selection and making sure that you're not you know grabbing those elements that are essentially turned off so if we come down here and um, are up here and actually pin this element say we want to pin this wall because for whatever reason we don't want it to move then we come down here and turn that off and as you as I had that selected and then turn this this tool on it actually unselected the wall which is you know natural um, so if we try to actually select that again we can see we have 
we can't. So even if I tabbed into it, there's no way of doing that. Um, the next one is uh, face. So in our 3D view, I ca I'll kind of show this. And I'll jump to a 2D view, or yeah, a 2D view so that we can look at it there as well. So I'm going to press Control-Z to go back to our regular view. And a face is essentially just, you know, this wall here, or I mean this seal, or this floor, and then this wall here. You know, the face of that wall, so everything right here, um, and none of the edges. So if we come down here, um, I can turn off face, and then I can come in to this... Uh, floor and try to select it and it doesn't allow me unless I go to the edges and then I can actually select that floor and I may want to do this because I'm working with elements that are um, not in or uh, not the floor itself but elements that are hosted on that floor like for example this um, person here this RPC uh, model or RPC family I can now grab it without having an issue of accidentally grabbing this floor and again if there's any elements over here you know accidentally grabbing a wall you know for example if I was kind of only focused on these um, windows then it would make it a little bit easier to not accidentally select the wall if I have this setting turned off um, but again, you can still select these uh, items. You just have to come over to the edge and you may have to tab into it. You know, if I get kind of close to it but not exactly on it, I could probably try to tab into it. Um, we'll see if we actually get it. We can see we can grab it that way. Also, if you know you have enough room there and there's not elements kind of overlapping it you can easily just uh, go to the edge and select that item um, the next one is the drag elements on selection so this is kind of cool and useful um, I haven't used this that much because I didn't really um, notice it down there uh, but when you select on this and don't have it uh, clicked or when you have it turned off you can actually, so we'll turn these uh, um, face back. We'll just turn everything on except for that one. And um, in here, you can see, even if I'm hovering over this, if I just do a straight click without moving my mouse, or I mean just uh, by clicking and then letting go, you can see it, collect, it clicks that floor. But with this turned off, I can actually come in here, um, uh, click my left mouse wheel butt, or my my left mouse button if I click on that and then move I can then uh, create a selection box either this one or this one um, and without accidentally selecting that floor underneath it if this thing is turned off so if we go ahead and do that as soon as I make that first click it's going to select that floor and then move it as soon as I try to move the mouse so if I go ahead click the left uh, left mouse button once you can see it's already highlighted the floor and then I go ahead and try to move it to create a selection box you can see it's now moving that floor as you can see with that um, kind of light blue um, uh, lines representing that floor there so um, if I go ahead and just cancel out of this it'll go back but again, you know, if I'm trying to select things this way, um, it's going to grab those elements. Now, that may make sense to you if, to have. So again, if this is something you wanted to move or if you wanted to grab this and immediately move it over, then you have that option. Um, but if you don't want to do that and you're trying to create a selection box or something, you can then turn that off. And then there you can create a selection box because generally um, you'd have to come out here, kind of make a selection box, then filter it based off of what you're selecting. Um, whereas having it this turned off, it's a little bit easier in selecting the items that you want. Um, so there you go. Um, uh, so there is two more things down here. Uh, these aren't necessarily the selection uh, buttons, um, except for maybe the filter, which we don't get over here. 
um, that kind of is a selection button because when you select whatever item you can come up here and click the filter or you can come down here and filter what it is that you're selecting uh, but that's not that's not something you're going to see over here so it's not necessarily a selections setting uh, button so there's that and there's also this tool which I'm not entirely sure what it does it says that it displays uh, processes and like calculations and stuff and it also says you know such as color fills you know but that's kind of what's going on over here this is a um, a uh, scheme so if we come over you know drop this uh, box down in the architectural tab we can see uh, color schemes and then if we click on that we can go to rooms and then see that names that this is what's driving the color right now and then um, if I switch it to area which we can actually do over here and this is how we set the schemes to represent correctly in these drawings um, I just have to find it which I probably passed it Ah, it's right here. I keep thinking it's going to look like uh, these text um, up here. But uh, if we click on this, we can actually change it to like something like area. Because I was like, I was kind of thinking that if we switch it to something like this, for whatever reason, it might think um, that it's doing some calculations there. But it doesn't seem to affect this because it says no background calculations and progress. But we are we do have a uh, color scheme uh, applied to this so this may be used for systems and stuff so that tool is down there as well but it's not necessarily there as a selection setting um, I'd love to know if anybody um, kind of uses that uh, tool down there or if um, uh, they know what it's looking at I haven't checked it out yet so that would be super awesome to know but um, hopefully other than that hopefully that this uh, video has been helpful for you um, again, we covered, you know, these four things down here and, um, you know, f for you to get in there and mess with it, all you'd have to do is come down here, either click them on and off, or again, come up here to, uh, regardless of what tab you're in, just come over here, click this little drop down, and then turn the uh, different tools on and off there. So, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, do let me know if you have any questions. Uh, please like, share, comment. Also, if you want to see more, subscribe. And uh, thanks a lot for watching.